We left reserved after having a Mother's Day brunch and hiked 20 miles, including a late afternoon jaunt up Mangus Mountain. It was a mostly uneventful afternoon and we cowboy camped next to a water spigot for a very windy night. Last night <laughs> was probably like one of the worst nights of sleep I've ever gotten on trail. It was super, super windy and um, like to the point where I thought I was gonna be blown over a few times. We decided to cowboy camp, one because of the wind and two uh, just to like get out of camp early today because we want to get to Pie Town at a decent time this afternoon and man it was something we woke up like covered in dirt because the wind just blew up all the dirt. After wiping the dirt off everything we own we started our walk toward Davila Ranch an awesome little oasis in the middle of a lot of road walking. The Davilas let hikers camp, cook, charge their stuff, and even use an outdoor shower for a donation. I made eggs and potatoes for Kid and I before we continued the road walk into Pie Town, fully fueled. The 14 miles of road walking after the ranch proved to be hard on my joints and old injuries, but we made it to town by around 2.30 p.m. anyway. Town, in this instance, was just a few streets with houses and we were heading to one that's particularly famous on the CDT, the Toaster House. It's easy to spot because of the entrance gate decorated in old toasters from which it gets its name. After setting up our tents in the backyard, Kid, Stallion, and I ventured off to find food and, hopefully, pie. Although the first place we went didn't actually have a menu outside of pie, they promised they could make us burgers and pizza. Back at the toaster house, I took a shower, did shower laundry, and worked through my resupply, discovering I had way too much food and hiker boxing a good chunk of it. Later that evening, a local restaurant brought leftover pies, and Nita, the owner of the toaster house, treated us to a liqueur tasting. We were certainly in the bubble with at least 30 hikers around, some familiar faces, some new, but all dirty and happy and free. The next morning, we made breakfast from the Toaster House Hiker Pantry and took our time leaving. We had almost exclusively road walks for the next 70 miles, and I wasn't exactly eager to get started. We just got trail magic. The guy who owns TLC Ranch, which is on far out, it's a spot that hikers can get water on this long road walk out of Pie Town, and I think we're going to probably camp there tonight. They also allow people to camp on their property which is great because we're just walking through like a lot of private well we're walking on a road past a lot of private property. Kid and I agreed to a shorter day out of town to give ourselves a little bit more of a chance to rest and we decided to stop at our first water another kind rancher who lets hikers sleep on their property and get water from the front porch of an old homestead. The ranch is called TLC Ranch and we even got to meet the patriarch Larry who gave us oranges on our way there. He came to chat as we were setting up camp and Kid even networked his way into a potential elk hunt. Larry told us about how the homestead was brought in years ago from 10 miles away by four horses and that the family who lived there used to sell beans and gas out of it. We cowboy camped in the covered porch area and were eventually joined by another hiker, Nanners, before drifting off to sleep. We decided to try to push a 25 mile day after cutting it short the day before. It was also the only way to camp at water. The whole morning felt dreary and boring, with dirt roads stretching as far into the distance as I could see, with no shade to escape the heat. Around lunch, we finally entered a wilderness area and got to walk some actual trail. The hard dirt was replaced by sandy washes, which was a different kind of challenge for my sore feet. The highlight of the afternoon was this dilapidated old cabin, which I imagine was an old homestead. It's honestly pretty humbling to realize somehow people made it work living out here, not just walking through like we were doing. After just five miles, we were back on road and in search of our final water source, a solar well. I listened to the Monkey Wrench Gang to take my mind off the walking, and we eventually found the water in a camp spot. We ended up sleeping next to a decaying elk, but it wasn't the first dead animal we slept next to on this trail, and I was pretty sure it wouldn't be the last. My morale had suffered quite a bit the day before, and I fell asleep once again, doubting my resolve to keep going. 
but a good night's sleep is always helpful, and I started the morning ready for a full day of road walking. After gathering some water from another cow trough, we joined the paved highway that would take us all the way to Grants, New Mexico. This section from Pytown to Grants has literally just been road walking, more road walking, more road walking, more road walking. And at this point, I feel like I'm on a road trip, but by foot. I'm not gonna lie, it's not fun. It's kind of hard on your body too, because the ground's so hard. We've been trying to like walk on the shoulders and stuff and like find the soft ground so we don't beat ourselves up too much, but it's not very easy. Um, kid just almost stepped on a snake. So that provided a little entertainment to our morning. This is either a 22 mile dry stretch or a 16 mile dry stretch, depending which way we decide to go. We haven't decided yet if we're gonna take the red line all the way to Grants or do an alternate, which instead of paved road walking, is just dirt road walking. And honestly, it's nine miles longer on the dirt road walk. And really like dirt road walking isn't that much better. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Eventually we decided on the fastest route to Grants, which was mostly paved highway with the option to take one off highway alternate. On the morning road walk, another three hikers parents gave us some Gatorade and later on told us that their son had taken that off highway alternate and definitely recommended it. So we ditched the road for trail and a little bit of route finding. The detour put us on top of a mesa, which gave us sweeping views of the lava field on the other side of the highway. The route guided us all the way to La Ventana Arch, where we made our way down steep, loose rock marked with occasional cairns to get back to the highway. When we were back on the pavement, I was feeling surprisingly good, rejuvenated by my first flirtation with route finding. Kid, however, was not feeling the pavement pounding. After a long break and a quick pep talk, we agreed to hike to the ranger station, sleep there, and see how we felt in the morning. We got water just a little while ago from someone past us on the highway, and then we got beer from a guy named Clayton, who it sounds like um, understands the trail pretty well. He was telling us uh, it gets better after Grants, so let's go. We weren't sure if we were really allowed to camp at the ranger station, but there were no signs explicitly saying not to, and it was a better option than potentially becoming roadkill in the middle of the night. In the morning, we both felt better and ready to tackle the remaining paved miles into town. We sang to throwbacks and talked about all the food we were about to eat. When we made it to Subway, we hitched the rest of the way to our hotel and eventually met up with friends for Mexican food and pool hangs. Uh, anything else to add? Uh, New Mexico sucks. Yeah, we're very over road walking. So far. We're ready for uh, some mountains. <laughs>